We've graduated numerous people with disabilities and having a son with a disability and a sibling with a disability, what I've learned is when people are taught to advocate for their needs, the outcome is very different than when everybody does something for you. Self-advocacy is something that's really important to me. Uh, I was a student with a learning disability in reading and writing. I am dyslexic and I have ADHD. So growing up, I really had to learn how to tell my teachers I needed extra help and would go for tutoring every day after school if that's what I needed. So becoming a teacher and being such a big part of other students' lives in education, I knew that I had to teach them from day one how to self-advocate for themselves. For reading, I couldn't like read that good, and math, I couldn't solve out the problems that good. The reason why I need a quiet place because it helps me with my grades, it helps me concentrate and understand what I need to understand. In the field of special education research, how do we utilize the power and harness the power of technology to ensure that students are leading their own learning and using best practice at the same time? We're working with kindergarten students with and without intellectual disabilities, so students with Down syndrome and the like, um, and I'm teaching them how to do basic computer programming skills. Right now we're at the very beginning phases of just teaching very, very basic skills, and eventually what we hope is that we can follow the students and keep working with them. Hopefully it will help with their problem solving skills, especially in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. The research literature on the outcomes for students who can self-advocate is clear. Empowering students with disability through technology increases college enrollment, employability, and most importantly, meaningful participation in life.